Hi everyone and very good evening to all of you. I hope that you are all fine and in the best of your health. Now today's video is actually a very, very important topic for anyone who is actually preparing for the PGMA preparations. Reason being that those topics which I'll say is not actually covered in most of the you know classes that we do. And secondly, secondly, there's one more important thing I'll just point out here, and that is this topic is a high yielding topic. What I want what I want to talk about this is there are some topics which is covered or you might have read in your second year days and there are some topics which is not ever covered and you don't read them usually in your uh, preparation days. So here I am to discuss all the instruments and the practicals important from the clinic, non-clinical point of view. So I will I'll be covering entire biochemistry, physiology as well as pathological parts. Okay. I hope you are all ready and pumped up and let's start with the class. So very good evening to all of you. Yes, very good evening to all of you. Here, this class is about instruments and practicals in pathology. So let's see how many of you are in the live now. A oh, very good evening to all of you. I hope that you, every one of you should have some good amount of questions before we begin here, because this is a topic which I hope to you that you know that in second year, we actually miss these classes. So yes, very good evening to all of you. The first topic, first one being this one. So any idea what exactly is this? So what you're saying here is these all are the four actual types of small antibody script here. And if you if I zoom it here, it's an anti-A blue color, anti-B yellow color, anti-D it's a I'll say just transparent color and anti-AB is the pink color. So what is this? It's all is used where it's used in the blood banking. Yes, these all are used in the blood banking services. So what we do is the basic use of this all is to determine the actual type of blood drops. So what did you know about blood drop is the few things I will just point out here. See in the blood drop when a question comes, you will be first of all asked about that what are the blood drops that you all know. So if you if you see this, you already know that the blood drop has some antigens and will have some antibodies. So you look, the antigen of the blood drop like blood drop A will have A and H antigen. So we'll have anti B antibody, right? A B blood group will have B and H and will have anti A antibody. A AB blood group will have A, B, and H. H is a precursor, you all know it. So we'll have no antibodies, but a O blood group will have only H will have both anti A as well as anti B antibody. So this is the first thing you should all know. So why I'm discussing this because there's something called as Bombay. Yeah, a Bombay phenotype in which there's neither A, neither B, not H. So the antibodies they have is anti-A, anti-B and also anti-H. So what happened, there is a problem in the forward grouping and reverse. Do you know what is forward grouping? So forward grouping is a type of grouping in which we look for the antigens. Yes, for forward grouping, we look for antigen and for reverse grouping, we look for the antibodies. So antigen hoga on the RBCs and antibodies are where? In the plasma. This is a forward and the reverse grouping. So often they are matched, but what happens sometimes they do not match. And then is when we call it a problem in the forward and reverse grouping. One of the causes can be a Bombay phenotype. The only blood group we can give them is the Bombay phenotype blood itself. No other blood group will be possible to give them. Questions other, other than this has also been asked, which of them is universal donor for the PRBC? Remember a universal donor. Now for this, if the question is a PRBC, it surely becomes who? It is the O because he has no antigen. So it becomes the O blood group. And if you have your choice, go for O negative. Similarly, if the question is for FFP, fresh frozen plasma, then you have to look for the AB because they don't have any antibodies. So it will be AB and negative because again, the blood cells can leak. So any amount of blood cell leaking, leaking into the plasma can have that detrimental effect. So always look for AB negative blood group. Okay, this was the first. I think I would just want to put it, put it out here. Yes, very good evening to uh, Lakshman, Maurya and Arjun, all of you. Very good evening to all three of you. And anyone who is all watching, please introduce yourself so that we can just move ahead with any doubt that you actually have in the live session I'm now having. Okay, next. So look at this one and tell me what is your answer? What is a blood group according to you? Tell me what is a blood group you think it is the answer? Quick, fast, fast, fast. What is the answer? Well, look at the answer. What do you say? A is what? Yeah, negative. B is, look at the agglutination. This is positive. And this is D. And D is also positive. So blood group is what? It is a forward grouping. In a slide method, the blood group is B positive. The blood group is B 
positive. So when you give attitudinization, look at the attitudinization, look at this attitudinization dot 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 like structures. These all are attitudinations which definitely, definitely positive here. Definitely positive here. Yeah, some other friends have joined you. So Ravi and Meghna, definitely. Achuntia, these are definitely, definitely B positive blood groups. Definitely, surely it's B positive blood group. And remember, it's a forward grouping. It's a type of forward grouping. And in the forward grouping, it is what method? It's a slide method of blood grouping. But if it is asked, which is the best method? The best method is the reverse grouping being done, forward and reverse both being done by the tube method. So remember, if you talk about the tube method, so why it is best? Because the tube method looks for both forward and reverse grouping. So both of them can be seen here. Yes, very, very good. Great. Let's move ahead. Okay. What instrument do you think it is? For oh, quick, fast, fast, fast. Let me, please tell me what is this instrument? Now in this instrument, look at this whole you can see this marking also look at the marking here it is on one side the marking is given as from 0 to 9 and other side it is 9 to 0 so what is it it definitely is a windrobes tube and what is this it's a pasture puppet it's a pasture pipette and with a windrobes tube so again this becomes a very important question for you all a pasture pipette with a windrobes tube now few things you should understand remember here that can be asked that windrobes tube okay if i say it is windrobes so few things you must know here and what are those for a windrobes tube you must first know what is the length and the diameter remember windrobes tube is of 110 millimeter length and has a 3 millimeter diameter okay 3 millimeter diameter the use of windrobes tube number one it can be used to measure esr and definitely it can be used to measure pcb the reason is the lower end is closed okay this one is it's a pasture pipette it's a pasture pipette Okay, it's a pasture pipet. Yes, it's a windrobes tube. It's a windrobes tube. Definitely, definitely sure. Yeah. So it's a windrobes tube with 310 millimeter diameter. But look at the mar markings. The marking will be marking will be from 0 to 10, 0 to 10, and from 10 to sorry, from, from 10 to 0. So the advantage of looking at this both graphing, you can measure ESR as and as well as PCV, both of them. So why PCV? Because once you take blood and you centrifuge them. After centrifugation, you get three layers. The lower part of this whole thing will have RBCs, will then have a buffy coat, and upper area will have what? Will have plasma. Okay. So three layers are formed once you are centrifugating it. So advantage is with a buffy coat being prepared in the in the between them, you can also do one parasitic estimation. So any idea which parasite would you see in the buffy coat? Any idea from any one of you? My question is which parasite can you see with a buffy coat? If you have an answer, tell me in the group. What is the answer to a parasite? Which parasite can you look for in a buffy coat? So for a buffy coat, you can definitely look what? Yes, the LD bodies, the LD bodies of the Kalazar. The Kalazar can be looked into with the buffy. Yes, plasmodium is mostly where in the RBCs. So plasmodium is not better to see in the buffy coat. But yes, if you do a process staining, then you can look for a plasmodium else the better answer is a buffy coat has a better advantage of looking for smear prepared from buffy coat for ld bodies the lishman don the lishman donovan bodies it is the uh, ld bodies okay now a very a similar type of instrument like this one it is just his brother it is called his vestigrin tube so why it is vestigrin it's a vestigrin tube and what is this it's a stand so vestigrin has a sign because it, first of all you should understand it's open at both ends the biggest Thing that you should understand is big open at both ends the length it's 300 millimeter in length okay with 0 to 200 mark the marking is as double of what was in windrobes it is 0 to 200 it's open at both the ends and diameter of this is a bit less than the windrobes tube is around 2.5 millimeter 2.5 millimeter okay now comes a big question can you tell me the anticoagulant we you use in the anticoagulant that you use in the vestigrin tube anyone can tell me what is the anticoagulant you can use in the vestigrin tube let me see how many of you know this anticoagulant for vestigrin is what and anticoagulant for windrobes is what what is the anticoagulant anticoagulant for vestigrin and anticoagulant for windrobes for windrobes what is the answer let me see how many of you know this so anticoagulant for the vestigrin is actually a tri-sodium citrate and the ratio is actually 1 is to 4 the ratio is 1 is to 4 of the blood 
1 is to 4 of the blood. But the, for the wind ropes, what we use is EDTA. Yes, dipotassium EDTA. Dipotassium EDTA. The question is, can we do Western grain in wind, wind EDTA? Yes, you can. But for that, it is called as new or modified Western grain method. That is called as modified Western grain with, method. Okay. Yes, for wind ropes, if you see that what is the best anticoagulant, the best anticoagulant for wind rope, best one is actually what? The best one is actually what you're saying is double oxalate. Okay, so double oxalate is the best method for wind ropes, but this is all not available in most of the laboratories. So what we mostly use is EDTA, but for Western we use tricitrate in a ratio of 1 is to 4 and that, you know, it's the, the color, the color of that tube is black in color it's a black in color okay it's often black in color and now we'll talk about this in the upcoming next slides so see here look at these tubes yes we'll give a good, good idea so what are these tubes so see in this tube you can look at this black color tube this black one the black one has a sodium citrate in the ratio of one is to four okay but the light blue here the light blue has a ratio of one is to nine so let's talk about this various tubes that you should know here. First of all, I'll try to talk about the tubes here and what do they contain and what are the basic uses. Like if you talk about the lavender color, look at this lavender color. Lavender color, that is purple. You can say lavender, you can say or purple. It actually has dipotassium EDTA. Okay. It is used to do CBC and the ESR. But which ESR? Yes, I hope you got it correct. Which method? It can be used to do a either a Wintrobes method or a modified Westergren, okay? Remember ESR for a wind ropes or a modified Westergren, okay? Second, then you should look for the red color. Red may, it is having no anticoagulant and so we prepare serum for it for the LFT and the KFT. The yellow tube you see, this yellow, this red, the yellow tube you see often has a clot activator. They have a clot activator. Because they have clot activator, they often are again used to use for serum only. You at the green color, the green color, they often have what? They have heparin. And the basic use of heparin is for looking for electrolytes. Okay, electrolytes is often used also for ABG analysis and also is used for the osmotic fragility testing, OFT testing. Okay, and also used for all the cytogenetic testing. Cytogenetic testing. Then look at the other colors. Look at this gray color. This is gray color. The gray color has what? They have sodium pride as well as what they have is the sodium fried as well as they have the potassium oxalate the basic use of this one is to get sugar estimation the basic use of them is to get sugar estimation these are all things you should know in these tubes okay let's move ahead okay any idea what is this any idea what is this so any guesses guys what do you think is this What do you think? Is this any idea? So guys, back up. What do you think is this instrument? This instrument is what? It is actually a bone marrow needle. It is called a SALA. It is S-A-L-A-H. SALA bone marrow aspiration needle. Okay, it's a bone marrow aspiration. It is not called sali, it's sala. Okay, now remember how to end up with this. Look at a side screw. This is a side screw. It's the biggest identification point for a bone marrow needle. If this doesn't have a side screw, it becomes clema. It will become a clema. Now look at this needle. This becomes a jam shady. Okay, full name is trifine biopsy needle. Okay, look at the handle. Okay, look at a stilette and this is the needle and this needle, if you look at the end of this needle, it has a edge like this. Okay, edge like this, a beveled edges. Because beveled edges, they are called as beveled edges. This is actually what? It's a Jamshedi trifine biopsy needle. Jamshedi trifine biopsy needle. What can be asked in this? The question often asked in this one is, what is the site? It is PSIS for an adult. And for a tibia, medial tibia velocity for a child. If the question is on sternum, do it at the level of second intercostal space because that is the thickest portion of sternum. Okay. Okay, next one. 
what is this one look at this needle what do you call this it's a true cut biopsy needle okay it's a true cut biopsy needle so what we do here is if you look at this needle we first take, take this needle okay and the button here with the hello this when you press this button what happens one of this needle goes inside the lesion okay button goes inside the lesion then with when you again press this button again you press the button what happens? this blade above this is a blade right the blade goes over the first one so once this blade goes over the first one what happened this portion if you just take this color here this portion of the tissue is now taken out here it is called as true cut biopsy because you are going deep into the lesion and taking the biopsy from inside the lesion and hence called as true cut biopsy lesion true cut biopsy lesion okay what do you have? again i tell you what happens this is a sheath okay it's a sheath here okay so what you do when you first press the needle this needle only goes inside you again press the needle the sheath goes inside and this portion from this entire core is taken outside and hence called as true cut biopsy needle the basic use of them is to do a kidney biopsy a breast biopsy a liver biopsy anything can be done by this it's called true cut biopsy needle okay true cut biopsy needle okay look at this one so once you take or do a cytology or FNSA, you have to send that FNSA slide or cytology, the pap smear slide into a fixative. I also took the class of fixative the last time. You send all of them in this jar called as Coplin. Okay, it's a Coplin jar. So Coplin jar is basically a jar in which you can put fixatives here. There's a fixative fluid here. For example, you can take 95% uh, ethyl alcohol and this ethyl alcohol, you can put the cytology slides and look at this slide number one set number two, set number three, set number four, and set number five can be put. What we do usually is we just require one, two, and three slots. The slide can be put in these three areas. It's called Scoplin jar. It's called Scoplin jar. Okay. Next one. Deco. What is this? Any idea? What is this instrument? This actually is what? It's a lumbar puncture. It's a lumbar puncture needle. Remember? The question can be what is the best site the best site for lumbar puncture is l between l3 l4 l3 l4 and it's better than looking for l2 l3 why look if this is the canal of the spinal cord okay canal of the spinal cord and let's assume there is a you know you all know that there is a sheath and this is a sheath in which you can see this is the nerve okay this is spinal cord so after the a after the level of l1 after the level of l1 okay this sheath this sheath is the meninges okay meninges continues up to s2 okay and then below this there is a coda equina so what happens the best area of doing this lumbar puncture is to take out the fluid so when you want to take out the fluid let, let me just draw the fluid here it'll be more easy for you to understand if you take out the fluid see let's assume this is a csf fluid okay this is a csf fluid so if you want to take out the fluid the better area is to look for the l3 and l4 because if you go above l1 if you go above l1 you can injure the spinal cord and if you go below s2 you will not get anything so best is to go at the level of l3 l4 better than l2 l3 because some patients have a, a level up to l2 also so often the best side for doing is a between l3 l4 a better side than l2 versus l3 now when you go inside when you go inside this needle suppose you're going inside this needle okay so it's often asked that what are the structures you are piercing so what you're piercing first you are piercing skin then you're going to subcutaneous tissue then you go into interspinal ligament interspinal ligament okay and then you pierce what you go into the ligamentum flavum ligamentum flavum then you move into the sub arachnoid sub arachnoid space sub arachnoid space and this is a space where you can get csf this is a csf that you actually get into this so it's often asked as what are the structures you will pierce before you enter here now other question that's often asked here is that what is the color and based on the color what is the size of the needle again look at the size like here it is showing you yellow and the black so based on this color the size can also be understood. For example, the black one will have 22 gauge and yellow will have a 20 gauge of needle. Now, can you tell me what is the rough, you know, uh, relationship between a diameter and gauge? Is it direct proportional? That, when, that means when the gauge increases, diameter increases or when the gauge increases, 
time rate decreases. Can you tell me what is the rough uh, relation between them? It is direct proportional or is inversely proportional? So let me see how many if I can answer it. Okay, 24 gauge is usually available mostly for the FNAC needles 20 to 24, but this is black is 22 and yellow is often 20 gauge. Okay, blue is 25. Remember, blue is 25 gauge. Blue is 25 gauge, and you might have seen pink also in most of the you know rewards. Uh, uh, you can find pink also. It is 18 gauge. Very good. Inverse relationship. Very good. It's inverse relationship. More the gauge less diameter less the gauge more diameter that's what you must remember okay so if you look at these colors so if you want to choose the thinnest of them you have to take the 22 gauge the black one or oh, sorry the blue one that is 25 gauge if you want the the thinnest even the thickest of them take the pink one which is 18 gauge there pink one which is 18 gauge there okay very very good very good asha anchita Moria, very, very good. And Ravi Pati, very good. Okay. So now tell me what is this and where do you use it? What is this and what is do you use it? It's already written there. If you look carefully, this graduate this will not be written in the exams though. But yes, it's a Sally's hemoglobin estimation tube. Sally's. Sala kya hai? S A L H. It's a bone marrow needle. And Sally's is a hemoglobin estimation needle. So what we do and what is the principle is for homo hemoglobin estimation. If you remember, the principle is acid hematin. Acid hematin method. Okay. Acid hematin method. Okay. So what we do here, look at the basic principle and this may come as a question. What we do here is we take hemoglobin. The basic principle is hemoglobin plus 0.1 normal HCl will give acid hematin. Okay. It will give acid hematin and this acid hematin is brown in color remember it is only hemoglobin which reacts what will not react is self and carboxyhemoglobin not self hemoglobin neither neither the carboxy hemoglobin okay and therefore we often use this method it is hemoglobin plus 0.9 n nacl the principal estimation is to estimate hemoglobin and how to get it you get by acid hematin method for those who remember it it's well and good for those who have do not remember it listen to me carefully what we do is we take 0.1 percent normal 0.1 normal hcl and we mess and we just take it up to the two person mark in the hemoglobin tube this hemoglobin tube or pipette it has two mark here okay it has two mark here there's a two mark here we put it up to two percent mark and then we take 20 microliter of blood Okay, we then take 20 microliter of blood. It is also again marked there. Then we transfer this whole thing into the hemoglobin tube. Into this hemoglobin tube. Okay, what we are taking? We are taking blood and 0.1% HCl. Okay, once we measure, when we take it, we put in this whole thing. And when it goes inside, then you have to mix it. Okay, this is a mixer. You have to mix it. And then you have to keep this whole thing into this area. In center of this area. Here. You have to put this in this area. Yaha par. Okay. And in this area, you will see the brown color. Now you have to match the brown color to this colors by adding what? Distilled water. You have to keep on adding distilled water and then you have to match the color with these things. So what happens then when the level keeps on increasing, suppose the matching has occurred at this level. Okay. And here you're getting a value written as say 12. So patient's hemoglobin will be 12. Simple. Again, repeat. Have you understood this? Have you understood this? If not, let me know. I will again repeat it. Okay. Else I am assuming that you have understood it. Very simple method. You take the blood, mix it with 0.1 normal HCl and then you mix them and ultimately you transfer in the hemoglobin graduation hemoglobin tube and then you put this tube here. You have to, you have to match the color of this tube with this color already put here. You keep on adding additional water. The level will keep on increasing. Suppose the matching has occurred at this level. What is written here? 10. You give the value as 10. Suppose the matching occurs at this level, the value is 15, it becomes 15 straight away. Okay, this is how it whole thing is done. It's called as hemoglobin estimation by the acid hematin level. Acid hematin level. Okay, let's move forward. Now look at this graph. This graph is a very tricky graph. It is a graph of osmotic fragility testing, OFT. So what to do here is and see percentage hemolysis written here. And this is NACL. 
it is two percent SCL here. A very good comment. Moya Rama telling me uh, remembering second year prof path lab. And actually, you have at least gone to the lab. Imagine your juniors who are now in second and third year and they have not gone to the lab. You are still in a much better situation than them. So I will, I will ensure this entire thing I will get for your second year. I'll get them in my own department. I'll call every one of them who can I come to my department and can see them because ultimately else they will not learn these things unless they, do go, they don't go to medical college. In fact, many second year prof students have not even gone to a medical college for even a full one month. Well, that's a different estimation. Let's come back to this. It is osmotic priority testing, OFT. So what we do here is look at this person hypnosis and look at the NACL percentage. So what you must remember here is two things. Number one, the hemolysis of a normal person, look at the normal range. Normal, normally, the hemolysis, it starts at what percentage? Look at this one. It's starting where? At 0.3% and it's over by around 0.4%. Okay? But when the curve shifts to right side here, the curve shifts right side, it means what? It means that even at high concentration of NACL, it is getting lysed. Are you getting the point? This is lysis. Okay, it's lysis. So you see, when the curve is shifting to the right side, what does it mean? It means, suppose the initial hemolysis was occurring between 0.3% to 0.4%. Let me take this as thing. Okay. Now what is happening is, now the lysis is occurring at 0.4 to 0.5%. That means, even at high concentration, even at high concentration, lysis is occurring. That means what? It simply means the fragility has increased. It simply means what is its implication? The curve shifts to right side. The curve shifts to right side. When the curve shifts right side, look at the curve to right side, it means this increased fragility. What is it showing you? It is showing you spherocyte. It's showing you spherocyte. The, the, I think I have explained to you in my <laughs> your classes that why does it happen? Similarly, if the curve is like this, it means if the curve is shifting left side, left shift, it means there's decreased fragility, decreased fragility, and this occurs in a microcyte. It occurs in a microcyte. So two things, spherocyte may right side shift, Microsite may left side shift, left side shift is occurring in the microsites. Okay, shall sure. next one. So, any idea what is this, guys? Any, 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 any idea what do you think it is? What is this? So, see what is this? This basically is a RBC, RBC, RBC counting fluid, uh, RBC counting pipette, RBC counting pipette and this one is a WBC counting pipette okay with the RBC you can also count platelets with the RBC you can also count platelets but remember one thing what you know sit to sing and how to identify this for an RBC for an RBC look at the red color one they grow this bead is red bead and look at WBC there's a white bead here first estimation thing Okay, second, look at the bulb size. Now, why and how to estimate this bulb size? See, this thing, this thing, uh, have a simple concept. RBC count is how much? If you look, if I count, if I ask you that our normal RBC count, RBC count is what? RBC count is in millions. It's around 4.5 to 5.5 millions, right? Per microliter. So, if I ask you, if I have, if I have to, uh, you know, count it, you would you need a higher dilution or lower dilution. You'll all say for a higher count, you have to put a higher dilution because unless you don't dilute it, how can you measure it? So dilution is done up to one, 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 zero, one mark. Okay. But for WC, the count is what? The WC count is from 4,000 to around 11,000 per microliter. So the dilution you require here is less, right? And this will bring you to two things. See, look here. They go. In a RBC pipette, how to identify it? By the red bead, first of all. And WC pipette by a white bead. This question was asked in last year INICT. So please listen to me carefully. Next. You see, there is a mark of 0.5 here, a mark of 0.5 here. 
तो मीन्स इनिशियली यू टेक द ब्लड अप टू पॉइंट फाइव ओके यू टेक द ब्लड अप टू पॉइंट फाइव इयर देन वॉट यू डू यू देन हैव टू देन डायलूट इट बाय डायलूटिंग थ्रू इट अप टू वन जीरो वन मार्क दैट मीन्स वॉट आर द आइडेंटिफिकेशन फीचर्स ऑफ आर बी सी पीपेट रेड बीड फर्स्ट आइडेंटिफिकेशन फीचर्स वन जीरो वन मार्क हियर फर्स्ट टेक ब्लड अप टू पॉइंट फाइव एंड डायलूटिंग थ्रू इट अप टू वन जीरो वन एंड दिस एरिया यू दे विल हैव अ मिक्सिंग वेल Mixing is done up to this part. In the Lucy pipette, the mark again is 0.5. They go 0.5 here also, 0.5 here also. Here is red bead, it's white bead here. Here is 101. What is written here? 11. It's 11 here. Matlab dilution. Please understand dilution of a RBC is how much? 0.5 and 101. Ultimately, it's taken up to 0.5, and you take actually 100. 0.5, so 0.5 and 100. 0.5, it becomes 100 times dilutions, 100 times dilution. And for the Lucy pipette, you take 0.5 and it's 11 here. So to me, you take 0.5 and 10.5. But the one is to 10 dilution. So remember again, for RBC you take one is to 100 dilution. Okay, and for the Lucy you take one is to 10 dilution. Because ultimately you have to discard the 0.5 one. Anyhow. What was the question again? Asked this here was this one. So make sure you take a snapshot of this and remember. Try to remember this. The question asked was for plated counting fluid. What is the fluid used? That is Reese Ecker fluid and Brecker Cronkite fluid. The same thing can be asked for RBC also. It's Hyams, Hyams and Desi. Hyams and Desi. For RBC, you use often the best and the most commonly used is the Turks method. For Turks method, for Turks method is often Turks fluid is often used for WBC. So if I if you ask me, sir, what to remember? See for RBC, remember Hyams and Desi. For WBC, remember Turks. And for platelets, Reese Ecker was a question asked in this year's IMCT. Breech conchite can also be used here. Breech conchite can also be used here. Now see, for WBC, you can also use two percent acetic acid and one percent HCl. Now, if you are thinking, so why and what is the basic purpose of the dilutive fluid? Very, very simple. If you want to count RBC, you have to lyse what? WBC. Simple. If you want to count WBC, you have to lyse what? So, so, yeah, RBC. If you want to count platelets, you have to lyse what? So, so, RBC plus WBC. As simple as that. Therefore. these fluids have a basic aim of lysing other cells apart from what you are about to count i again repeat the dilution process dekho what we do is you take first of all you take 0.5 i just i'm just drawing it here you first take point up to 0.5 ml of the blood here and 0.5 ml of the blood here theek hai now i hope i hope you remember there's a pipe here and there's also a pipe put here you have to suck it have you do you remember those days You have to suck blood. Okay, you don't. It's good. Then what you do is you then dilute the whole thing by fluid like this, up to one zero one mark. Then what you do is you mix them. You then you mix them and then discard the point five. So ultimately, you see what is the dilution? You have taken point five of blood and one zero zero point five of the dilute fluid. It becomes how much? It becomes one is to one hundred. What you do here is you take 0.5 ml of blood and 10.5 ml of the dilutive fluid. It becomes how much? It becomes one is to ten. It becomes one is to ten. One is to ten. ठीक है? One is to ten. This is what you must remember: RBC fluid and WBC fluid. Clear? Eh? I hope you should also try to remember this one. Yes, thanks, Piyush. Very, very thank you. And please try to share this video with most of your friends because I know it's a rare video, and you won't find this video. I haven't, I haven't seen this video in the YouTube also. So I made a point because it was a request from my students to just please take this video of the practical sessions. I can assure you, if a practical question comes, it will be from this. If not, neither you will answer, neither rank one will answer. That is what the confidence you should have after watching my videos, right? Chalo, next one. What is this instrument? This instrument is what? It is actually a type of, yeah, it's a improved new bus chamber. It's nothing but a improved new bus chamber. Okay, improved 
new bus chamber. What is it? It's an improved new bus new bus chamber. Improved new bus chamber. ठीक है अब देखो. Look at the new new bus chamber. What do you see? It has a shiny end here, and it's a groove here. The groove is basically when you charge a fluid here, the excess fluid will go out here and will pass out from here. So when you put fluid over here and then you put a cover slip, any excess fluid will pass on here and ultimately will come out and pass out from this area. You see, this is the two areas which you have to look in detail. If you if I magnify these two areas, what do I see? I see area like this. So two things you understand. You should understand. We look at this. This is the basic area I just drawn above. In the basic area, the 16 squares here, 16 here, 16 here, and 16 here. But at center, the 25 squares, the 25 squares here. Now, if what count in WBCs or any cell whose count is less, you have to count here, 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 and here. So for WBC, you have to take these counts. For RBCs and platelets or sperm, you have to count one, two, three, four, and five. So for RBCs or platelets or the sperm whose count is very very high, you have to count in this center area. So again, repeat few things. Number one, for WBC, these sixteen squares. So sixteen into four, sixteen, na? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Kita wa? Sixteen, na? This whole thing is sixteen. So this sixteen, this sixteen, this sixteen, and this sixteen. And then you take the average. You have to then take the average. For example, see if the question is if suppose the count is ten here, twelve here, fifteen here, and suppose ten here, and you have to give me the total fluid total counts if dilution used is dilution used is ten. Suppose dilution used is one is to ten. You have to give the number. So how to get the number? You first add ten plus twelve plus fifteen. Plus ten. What is it? Add through ten, twenty, and forty-seven. Okay, forty-seven. Okay. So the formula is number by dilution. Sorry, number by volume. Number by volume, right? Number by volume into dilution. अब देखो volume क्या है? See, basically what happens? Each of this area has one mm. This area is this is one mm. लिखा हुआ है one mm. This also is one mm. ठीक है नो व्हेन यू पुट अ कवर स्लिप हियर दिस एरिया बिटवीन देम देखो दिस एरिया यहां पर ये एरिया दिस बिकम्स 0.1 एमएम दैट मींस द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द फ्लूइड हियर इट बिकम्स हाउ मच सोचो 47 इज अ नंबर एंड वॉल्यूम इज 1 1 0.1 एमएम क्यूब ठीक है एंड व्हाट इज द डायलेशन फैक्टर गिव यू 1 इज टू 10 पुट 10 हियर सो व्हाट हैपेंस 47 बाय 1 100 बिकम्स 4700 Four seven seven zero zero per mm cube, also called as four seven zero zero per microliter. Now this is a question which is very repeatedly asked in the actual exams. So understand what I just told you. Okay, please remember this type of questions have been asked and will again be repeated if you don't listen to this carefully. The formula is always number by volume into dilution. Simple. Number kitna hai? Forty seven. Forty-seven. Now see, forty-seven number was for. I just did a mistake. Number forty-seven was for one, two, three, and four. So I had to take the average. So forty-seven by three. Sorry, forty-seven by three should be the here. So answer kya hoga? Forty-seven by three. Kitna aana chahiye? So because I'm taking the volume of only one of them, I'm taking volume of only one of them. So if I have taken whole forty-seven, so then I should have taken four into this volume. For the point. So because I've taken only one of them. So volume is, how much volume? As you can take forty seven by three, or if you are taking forty seven, then you take into four here, then it should come. Again same you again, okay? So how much it is forty seven by four? Okay, forty seven by four into into hundred. What is it? It's almost around. If you take two and it becomes how much? Twenty. Let's take it twenty six. How much will it be? Two and three twenty three point one. So how much will it be? Again you have to just half it. It becomes around the one and two, so it is around one two zero zero, around roughly around one two zero zero mm cube or per microliter. So take a forty seven by four because I have to take only one of this. So I will take volume of all the fours. 
or you take any one of them and volume also one of them. Okay, yes, it should be 47 by 4. It should be 47 by 4. Yes, okay, got the point. Okay, but for RBCs, you have to measure here. These five square you have to take what for RBCs, for platelets, as well as for sperm. As well as for sperm, RBCs, platelets, sperm, you have to take it from here. So, are you all clear here? Can, can I get some yes here? So, for those who understood this thing, can I get, get, can I get some yes in the uh, in the chat group, I took number. Number kitna hai? Add kiya maine 47. Volume kitna hai? Volume 1 into 1 into 0 0.1. But because I have taken 4 of them, kitna hua? 4 into 1 into 1 into 0 0.1 becomes 47 by 4 into 100. 47 by 4 into 100. So the answer is this thing. Theke? Okay, next one. Yes, thank you. Chalo, I think it's clear now. Let's come to this one. This is actually a flow cytometry scatter plot. It's a flow cytometry scatter plot. What is done here? The cells are moved along a single straight line. Then from this area, a light is incident. After passing through cell, some light goes in the same direction and some goes in the side direction. The light which goes in the same direction is called as forward scatter. Remember, it's directly proportional to cell ka size. And the side is called a side scatter proportional to the granules as well as the nuclear complexities. Okay, granules and nuclear complexities as well as nuclear complexity is what it is proportional to the side scatter. Forward is called as FS and side is called as SS. So based on this, you can also be asked to plot them in the scatter plot. For example, if I draw, draw, draw this plot like this, forward and side scatter. Let, let's say I have to put lymphocyte, which looks like this, and I have to just compare this with, suppose, eosinophils, which is a bit larger than this, which has two nucleus, so more complicated nucleus, and has a large granules like this. You have large granules, something like this. As, so see, among these two, you can really answer, understand this is a lympho, it's a eosinophil. If I have to put these two cells in this plot, what will I do is, lymphocyte has small size, lymphocyte will come here. Because lymphocyte is small in size and they neither have any renewals. But when you compare this to eosinophils, eosinophil, eosinophil has more size, so more forward and more sky scatter. It will come here like this. It will be of eosinophils. For the point, so because eosinophil will have more size and more granules, so it will have more forward and more side scatter. So based on this, various morphology can be estimated based on this. Okay. Now some questions from urine estimation. Again, this is this can be asked this year because they have been waiting for this. They haven't asked this for quite a long time now. So look at this. First of all, when you do urine estimation, few things you should understand. The best sample you take is actually what a random urine sample. However, you can often take a 24 hour urine sample for estimation of protein or creatinine or a catecholamine hormones. You often take a midstream urine sample for estimation of culture. You can do a supra pubic aspiration for children and comatose patients. And catheter can be given in bedridden patients or children only. Some preservatives are used. As a preservative, we use boric acid. Remember, as a preservative, as a preservative for urine, we use boric acid. As a, as a preservative, we use boric acid. But if you want to look for the form element like casts, for casts, you have to surely put the, uh, the I'll say, fixative agent called as 10% neutral, buffered, formalin which we mentioned also in the last class so that is often used if there is a cast estimation else you can use boric acid if urine has to be measured on the or has to be seen on the next day on the next day but now look at these four urines so what is test being done the test is called as benedict test benedicts what is benedicts a simple thing is if the urine has reducing substance if urine has reducing substance, then the CU, 
Cu2 plus will react with reducing substance, reducing substance which is in the urine, reducing substance in the urine, Cu2 plus in the benedict solution, benedict has Cu2 plus, okay, reducing substance is where in the urine and it will convert to Cu plus, Cu plus. Now, the concentration of Cu plus is proportional to the color produced. What is the color? Very simple to remember. Remember the mnemonic Vipgyor, V I B G Y O R, rainbow ka Vipgyor. So, kya hota hai? you can remember this the same phenomenon. Start from blue. Okay, blue. It is 1 plus. Then green. Okay, green. So, blue is minus, sorry. Blue is actually minus. Green is 1 plus. Yellow is 2 plus. Orange is 3 plus. And red is 4 plus. This can also be put under some various concentration, the actual concentration here, like if you look here, color kya kya hoga? green, yellow, orange, red, don't remember, gyor, g, y, o, r, whip gyor, wala gyor, g, y, o, r, g is 1 plus, yellow is 2 plus, orange 3 plus, and red is 4 plus, now what is plus means, green means 0.5%, yellow means 1%, orange means 1.5%, and red means 2%. This is simple estimation of the urine reducing sugar. So, what are who belong to reducing sugars? Who are those? It can be glucose, but can any of you tell me what are the other reducing sugars which can also give the test false positive? Can any of you tell me what are the other things which can also give this as false positive? Glucose to hogai. What else can give this false positive? Often it is a big problem. In inborn error of metabolism, you can also be given a question like this. A child had a disease and was giving you the benefit positive. Any of you can tell me? The right answer is galactose and fructose. So, any patient who has galactosemia or fructosemia can also give the substance positive. So, that's a bigger problem of the Benedict tests. Yes, vitamin C can give it. Vitamin C can give it, but substance wise, it can be galactose or can be fructose. Very, very good. Yes, very good. Very good. Okay. But upon this, this is a question often asked in an MCQ. Galactose, fructose and also vitamin C. Well, what do you think is this? This test is called as Rothera test. Rothera test. How do we do Rothera test? How do we do Rothera test? What we do is, first of all, it is test for ketones which ketones acetone okay ketones are aceto acetic acid and beta hydroxy butyric acid now can you tell me among these one two and three which of these are not detected by rothra test rothra test will not be able to detect which of these ketones any of it can tell me can any of it tell me which of them will not be detected by Rothera test. By the time I am writing the basic principle. The principle is ketones, ketones they actually react with sodium nitroprusside, sodium nitroprusside in presence of alkali, in presence of alkali. What is alkali here? It is just what? It is alkali is the ammonia. Okay, alkali here is ammonia. Okay, and what we give you as to the purple color. Don't forget the purple color being formed here. This is a purple color here. You have purple color. This is a purple color you find here. It's a purple color here. Yes, the correct answer is the correct answer is beta hydroxy butyric acid. Correct answer is beta hydroxy acid. These are measured. But this will not be measured. Yes, this will not be measured. Yevala, these will not be measured by Rothra test. Rothra does not measure beta hydroxy butyric acid. Rothra does not measure beta hydroxy butyric acid. Okay? Acetone is measured, acetic acid is measured, but this one is not measured by Rothra test. So it will give what? It will give a false negative reaction. I hope you remember that ketones often come positive in, yes, diabetes, 
DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, can also come positive in dehydrations. It can also come positive in dehydrations or can come, come positive in prolonged fasting. Can occur come positive in prolonged fasting. Okay. So just have a quick revision, a fast revision, guys. What all did we study? This is what it is about the blood grouping, and in the blood grouping, these are various antibodies. Blood grouping estimation, look for aggregation will give the test positive. This is a Winthrop's tube with a passive pipette. This is a Westerlin tube, open at both ends, more longer than a Winthrop's tube. Used again for doing ESR, but this will do ESR and PCV. All the vacuoliners color coded with different anticoagulants. It's a Salas needle, bone marrow aspiration needle. This is Jamshedi trifine biopsy aspiration and biopsy needle. It's a through cut biopsy needle. It's a coplin jar used to keep the slides inside it. What is this? It's a lumbar puncture needle. The color codes give you an idea of what is the gauge of that needle. What is this? It is basically what? It's a hemoglobin Sally's, not Sala. Sally's hemoglobin estimation. It's a osmotic blood test. When the curve shifts right side, it is spherocyte. On left side, it's a microcyte. What is it? It's a RBC pipette with red color and LBC pipette with the white color beads. Look at the marking. If the marking is 101, it's a RBC pipette. If the marking is 11 only, it becomes a LBC pipette. Remember, try to remember these counting fit. If you don't remember, no, no worries. Just try to read this just before the exam, two hours before, and you will just pass the exam. It's an improved numerous chamber. The basic idea is to count this number by volume into directing fluid and dilution a volume. It's a low cytometry scatter plot. This test is Benedict test. It's a Benedict test. Often look for reducing for looking for reducing sugar in the urine. And what is this? It's a purple color being formed for Rothra test, often used to do what? For measure, measuring a ketone estimation. For measuring a ketone estimation. That's all from my side, guys. I hope you like the class. And if you really like the class, please do like the video, share the video, and try to subscribe to my channel because I'll be coming up with many other discussions that you would like for me to do. So please like the video and do share it with you with your friends. And I'm very sure that you would have actually benefit from the video it was a very so, a small and crisp video but i've tried to put everything which is important for you and you have it in second year or third year or fourth year or whatever on the first year actually and have tried to make the things whole thing in a gist and was trying to make it more crisp and better for you i wish you all the best for the upcoming exams if you have any comments please put in the comment section below i surely uh, be able to read it and improve from this and your feedback is very very important for me thank you very much yes thanks a lot moria rama Thanks, Bhargav, Kanchan, Achuta, Lalit Vijay. Very thank you to all of you for uh, actually helping me and uh, giving this basic idea to come up with these classes and surely be coming up with more of this in the upcoming days. Thank you.